Hi, and welcome to another video by Get It Done Home Repairs. Today's project, we're going to be replacing this outlet with a new replacement outlet. Uh, the reason we're changing it is because, as you know, sometimes plugs will go in and they'll fall out. They don't stay in properly. We're just going to replace this outlet with a new one. Now, as you can see, this one here, or maybe you can't see, we'll, we'll zoom in and show you. But you can see this outlet here, how this is in. It's got the ground up on top and the two plugs on the bottom. That's not the way we're going to put it in. We're actually going to turn it around the other way around. We're going to have these two plugs on top, and that single ground is going to be on the bottom. But I'll explain that to you shortly. All right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our power is off in the outlet. And the way we're going to do that is we put our tester in here, and we're going to flip the circuit breakers until we get this to turn off. All right, so we're going to turn it off. Okay, so as you can see now, we have no power in this outlet, so it's safe to work here without getting a shock. These are fairly cheap. Invest in it. You'll, you'll be very happy that you did this. And another piece called a non-contact voltage tester. They come in very handy as well. All right, so next thing we're going to do now, we're going to come in here, and we're going to take some of our, our plate off right here. But let me back up. I'm going to show you what kind of tools we're going to need. And this is just an example of what we're going to need. We're going to need cutting pliers to cut the wiring, something to strip the wires, something to create a loop in the end of the wire, a couple of screwdrivers, some electrical tape, and a cutting um, instrument, a knife or a scissor, whatever you have. And I hear this all the time from people, how do I work with the power turned off in the house? And that's when this box comes in very handy, and I'll show you that in just a second. Now I hear this all the time from people that, that I'm working on a job, and they ask, how do you work with the power off? Like, when I'm working in this room, if the power was off, it would be really dark in here. It would be as if that. But now with this box, I can have the power turned off and I have light to work. And this box here can be really handy. You can produce 110 volts, so you can plug a traditional lamp into it without having to worry about using a flashlight to see what you're doing in the dark. All right, so that's how I do it when I'm working with electrical. So we'll put this off to the side right now, and that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so now we take our outlet cover off. It's just a flat screwdriver. We just take that, unscrew it, and remove this from the wall, just like that. Now this is on here for to cut down on the draft, it, so you don't get a draft through this box here. So we will reuse this again. Um, and this is the only piece that we're gonna be reusing. Next, we're gonna take these two screws out right here and remove the outlet from the, the wall itself. All right, we're just gonna take it down, and pull it out, just like this, just so we can expose the wiring in here. Now, as you can see, there's four wires in the back here, so it's very important that you put these four wires on in the correct location. Now, remember I told you we're gonna rotate this around the other direction, that this ground is gonna be lower, so these wires, even though they're white on this side, when we take our new switch and we put our new switch in, which is going to be like this with the ground here. Our black wires are going to go here, and our white wires are going to go there. But I'll show you that in just a second. All right, so now we have this disconnected. We need to take these out. And what they did here is they, they didn't use the screws to hold the wires in place. They chose to push it in the easy way into the back of the switch. There's a small little hole here. You can push them in, and it actually, it, it actually makes contact through there. I never recommend using that because it will definitely create a short, maybe not today or tomorrow, but someday down the road, you're gonna have a problem and it's gonna be traced back to these wires where they push in and don't screw down. All right, so what we're gonna do now, first thing we're gonna do, is we're gonna take off this ground wire on top right here, just unscrew it. Just like that. And then we'll take our ground wire off. We'll come back to putting this on later on, of course. Okay, so our ground is now disconnected. Now these wires, you can release them from here by shoving a tool or a small metal object into here to release them. I don't do it like that, I just cut these off because as you can see, we have plenty of wire inside the wall so that we can actually make it just a little bit shorter. So we're gonna come in here with our cutting pliers now and we're just gonna cut these wires off.
And these white wires and the black wires do not matter if it goes on the upper part of the switch or the lower part of the switch. It does not matter. So we're just going to put these out of the way for now. And now we'll cut these wires off right here as well. Just like that. And like that. All right, so now everything is disconnected. And then the back right here is what I was telling you about where they just push inside there. It's a lousy way to do it, but it's quick. If you had to remove these and these wires weren't long enough, you would push in a very small screwdriver, smaller than this. You would push it in here, push it in, and you could pull the wire out. But we're not worried about that right now. All right, next thing we're going to do now is we're going to take our wire and we're going to strip it back about a half inch to three quarters of an inch. And you put your pliers on here, you're cutting pliers on here like this. You put them on, you just turn it around like that, and you push it and it pulls it right off, just like this. We're gonna do the exact same thing to the rest of these wires, the same thing. Okay, so now all of our wires are stripped back. Now we're gonna take off needle nose pliers and we're gonna create a loop in the end of it. And the way you do it is just go around just like that to create a loop, just like that, okay? All right, now we'll grab our switch and we'll put our switch on. Now it's personal preference which ones you install first. So now we're going to take our wires and we're going to connect our wires on. But I want to explain to you how you connect the wire. You see how this loop goes around clockwise this way? When you put this screw on here and you tighten it down, you want the open end of the loop on the clock side rotation part of it so it pulls it tighter. All right, we're going to take it, bring it in here. I'll get it in here and I'll show you what I mean. Just like that. Pull it in here. Just like that. So now when I tighten this down, the open end of the loop is on this side and it's going to pull tighter. Make sure that your rubber insulation is not underneath this screw because it will create a, uh, a bad connection and you're going to have a problem. So make sure your insulation is not underneath that screw. Okay, we'll screw this down, hold it in place, screw it down as tight as you can, and that's it, nice and tight. We're going to do the exact same thing on this one here. We're going to take it and put it underneath that screw right there. We're going to take that, see how that, see how that wire is sticking out a little bit. We're going to take the needle nose pliers and we're going to pull that in just so it's totally underneath the wire is not exposed and touching into the plastic here. It's only on the metal. All right, and now we're going to have it turned down again, the clockwise position. Make sure that your insulation is not underneath that screw and we'll tighten it down as tight as you can just like that and that one is finished we're going to rotate it this way and now we're going to take our two black wires and we're going to reconnect them on as well now again we're going to do the rotation as clockwise like this but as you can see these wires are actually facing the wrong direction they're facing the other way so we need to take them and turn them just like this so that this wire connects on underneath here Just like that, so when you tighten it, it's pulling it tighter. We're going to squeeze the wire all the way down, just like that. Make sure that the insulation is not underneath the nut, and we're going to screw it down. All right, nice and tight. The insulation is not underneath that. Okay, next we'll take our last wire. We're going to rotate it so it's in the correct position, just like this. Bring it around. And we're going to put it underneath that, that other screw right there. And we're going to pull it tighter in there as well, just like that. And now we'll tighten that screw down all the way as well. Okay, so now our two black wires are connected here. 
our two white wires are connected there. Last, we're going to take our ground wire and we're going to connect it on right here. So we're going to take our ground like this and we're going to put it onto that screw right there. We're going to unscrew it. And again, you want to have it tighten around in a clockwise position, just like this. So when we tighten it, it pulls that tighter, just like that. Okay. Nice and tight. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to take electrical tape and we're going to put electrical tape around this part here so that we don't have any issues with this at all. All right. Just like that. And now all of our contacts are covered and we don't have to worry about it accidentally moving and touching into anything. All right, we're gonna take it like this. We're gonna push these wires back into the box and we'll put the two screws up into the top here. Next, we're gonna take our wires and we're gonna put them back into the box. And the way you do it is you don't just push it back. You wanna create a Z in the wiring so that you actually bend it down and then bend it up so that it actually pushes back into the box if the way it's supposed to just like that. Now we'll catch these screws up on the top here. Now when you catch these screws in here, you want to catch them in just by a couple of threads. Catch it by a couple of threads and then you move down to the bottom one and you catch the bottom one by a couple of threads as well. And then once you have them both caught, then of course you can tighten it up all the way. So we're gonna do that. Put it down just till it touches into the wall itself. In this case, it's paneling, but you would maybe drywall. So we'll just screw them down just till it touches. It does not have to be super tight. Okay, same thing here. Okay, so now our outlet is in. Remember what I told you about the eyelid? I mean the ground being facing down, so it's totally different than the one that was on there. It was on like this, and now we put it on like that. All right, so let's get our cover and put our cover on. They had previously an insulation piece on there, and that keeps drafts down, so we're going to put that back on just to cut down any kind of drafts that may be coming through. Put it on just like that. We'll grab our screwdriver. I'm going to snug this down. Remember, you're only screwing into plastic, so you do not want to over tighten it and break anything. All right, and now you can see everything is nice and flush. That's it, it's finished. Let's put our tester in here, just like this. We're going to turn on the power, and if everything is correct, we should have two, two red lights here, and this light should not light up. So let's, so let's turn the power back on. Okay, so as you can see, the power is back on, and it's set just the way it's supposed to. But that's it. This job is done, and we're on to the next one. The only thing I will tell you is make sure when you create that loop to put it on here, make sure that you have it going in the correct direction. As you're tightening up the, tight, the nut, it should pull them tighter inside there and make sure they're nice and tight. As I said, you can do it this way. Don't do it because you're going to have a problem later on down the road. All right, this job is done, and we're on to the next one. All right, as always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you on the next one.